Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1. This is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. Uh, we are in the second week lectures. Uh, this is the fourth lecture of second week. So, before we go into what we will be learning, uh, which is there in the first as a uh, lecture topic, shear and moment on wing of an aircraft. Uh, so, recapitulation if you talk about history already we have done uh, for structural analysis to some extent on aircraft development, conceptual details of uh, typical aircraft we have done flight envelopes and load factors, what is load factor, how fl from flight envelope a load factor is determined uh, during design. Uh, various parts of aircraft, how do we maintain a flight envelope, all those things we have learned, uh, loads from symmetric maneuver in the last class we have learned, we, uh, we have seen how can we calculate loads for a symmetric maneuver. And today what we will see, we will see that uh, the shear and moment on wing, how, how is it calculated, how do we find out due to the aerodynamic load and unit load analysis for wing shear and moments. So, uh, better we go for the uh, unit load analysis first and then we will uh, solve one problem to understand how do we find out shear and moments on wing. So, as we have uh, already seen that uh, we have we have discussed we have discussed the we have discussed the air load we have discussed the air load on the wing and the equilibrium of the airplane as a whole in flight it is customary to to replace the distributed air forces on an airfoil by two resultant forces lift and drag acting through the aerodynamic center of the airfoil plus a wing mo moment. So, for a structural engineer what finally we get the two lift, lift and drag forces and one moment and that we need to consider and we will have to find out uh, stresses build in component members and we will have to design. The flow around a wing is not uniform in span wise direction. Thus, the airfoil force coefficients C L C D and C M vary span wise along the wing. This already we have seen with some diagram C L varies, lift varies, C D varies drag varies and moment also varies from root to the tip along the span. Any particular type of airplane is designed to carry out a certain job or duty and to do that job requires a certain maximum airplane velocity. So, from the flight envelope already we are introduced with this, we are repeating just uh, to keep in mind that that is a major factor for airplane, airplane design with the maneuvering lim limited to certain maximum acceleration. So, that flight envelope gives us the maximum ac acceleration. So, if we why we are talking about if we do unit analysis then from that unit analysis we can easily go for uh, any acceleration level and the velocity from the velocity we can 
find out the acceleration from the envelope. These limiting accelerations are usually specified with reference to the x y z axis of the airplane. Since the directions of the lift and drag forces change with angle of attack, it is simpler and convenient in stress analysis to resolve all forces. So, since it changes as it is mentioned, it is resolved and with reference to the x y z axis which remain fixed in direction relative to the airplane. So, it is generally kept fixed and it is resolved and that way we generally continue. So, as a time saving element in wing stress analysis, it is customary to make unit load analysis for wing shears and moments. So, we are repeatedly saying we, we need to do, we usually do time saving uh, for time saving unit loads, but what is unit loads? These are the following steps by which we describe it to some extent, but it is difficult to understand uh, simply going through this text. That is the reason we will solve one problem uh, in one direction. Here it is talked about many more direction, more than one direction and we will see how that is carried out. So, let us try to understand uh, as far the text written here the as to assume a total arbitrary unit load acting on the wing in the z direction. This arbitrary unit load please keep it in mind it is not load 1. Unit load does not mean that it is under unit magnitude 1 magnitude of load acting on the wing in the z direction through the aerodynamic center of the airfoil section and distributed span wise according to the to that of C L or lift coefficient. So, what we are saying that it is distributed along the lift coefficient just to remember if we think of we have learned this is fuselage generally this is the distribution along the wing followed. So, accordingly C L is supposed to be distributed. Axial a similar total a similar total load as in 1, but acting in the x direction that is the reason to understand this reason. So, this is nothing but what we are talking about this C L is as he said that acts from the through the aerodynamic center. So, we can say so we can say this is the force acting. Okay. This C L is acting here in this direction. Uh, then the next it says that the similar total load as in 1, but acting in x direction in this direction. And then to assume a total unit wing load acting in the z direction through the aerodynamic center and distributed span wise according to that of C D. It was distributed according to C L, next it is distributed along C D. So, that same C D is acting here and we are supposed to do the analysis. Similarly, it is also acting this way. Then to assume unit wing moment which may be acting not this way. acting this way and we will have to solve that also, but it appears from this discussion that we need to solve 5 unit problems and we will need to keep that solution for a particular set of wing. So, for time we cannot solve all the 5 problems, what we will have to solve? We will solve only one type of problem we will see how do we solve the problem and we will uh, same process we can apply for others and so solve it. So, here is the problem what we will be solving today. Figure below shows the half wing plan form this is this figure we are talking about this figure we are talking about plan form of a cantilever wing 
Next figure shows a wing section at station 0. This is this figure next as next, fi next figure we are talking about it says at station 0 means we are talking saying that this is a station second station third fourth and consecutive stations numbered in this way according to its length from this axis. So, this is this way this is the leading edge, this is leading edge, this is leading edge, this is trailing edge, this is the trailing edge. The reference y axis has been taken as 40 percent chord line, 40 percent chord line from here to here it is 40 percent chord line, here it is the 40 percent chord line, this and this are the same representation which happens to be a straight line. In this particular case it is straight line, but usually it is not because of, uh, of complicated geometry and uh, requirement or, or various section types of aerodynamic foils, air foils used at different sections. In normal uh, modern days aircraft never uh, this, this section air foil is never same as this section air foil, air, air foil section changes, the shape also changes. So, depending upon that it is not a straight line that is why emphasis is given on that it is a straight line in this particular wing layout. The total wing area is 17760 square inch. Uh, for convenience a total unit distribution load of 17760 pound is taken. This is what we said we I have mentioned while we were discussing the last slide. It is not 1 pound, it is 17760 pound to keep the make the analysis convenient, it is not one load. Will be assumed acting on the half wing and acting upward in the jet direction and through the airfoil aerodynamic center. So, along this line it is acting upward, okay. along this line, this line it is acting upward. So, this, this is the simple problem what we have, there is a aerodynamic load acting upward this way, we are supposed to find out shear and moment it is as simple as that we have some dimensions. Let us see how do we do, how do we find out those. The span wise distribution of this load will be according to the C L lift coefficient span wise lifts coefficient span wise distribution for simplicity in this example it is it will be assumed constant. So, uh, C L is assumed to be constant along the length of the wing. So, here we come with some additional figure just to understand the problem first and then uh, the modern day tools computer tools with excel sheet will solve the problem. So, uh, let us see we look at the problem first how it is already we have have understood how what is this problem is. This is a half wing, this is this portion is fuselage, this is the wing, this is root section, this is leading edge this is trailing edge already we know 17760 equals to the area of the wing force is acting we are assumed on the aerodynamic center line and uh, this figure will help us in understanding let us see how it is acting. We will also assume that uh, the distribution of lift, lift along cord is uh, also unity. So, it is only one set of arrow is shown here, it is not like that. We are assuming that the distribution is uniform on this section and for understanding we can start with this section, actually this is this section we are trying to understand. So, 
this total force is acting upward this is a trapezoidal portion that is why this trapezoid is drawn here. We need the centroid how much it far it is from this because we need to find out the moment. So, that distance and multiply it by the sum of uh, resultant of the force acting there will give us the moment equals to m 1. The sum of all those forces will be will give us the uh, shear v 1. Once we have shear and moment in this section, we are considering the next section here. This is this section. If we understand the calculation up to this it is very simple. We are assuming distribution in, in this direction also uniform this direction also we have considered already uniform. So, uh, that load calculation point of view it has become easy. In this section for equilibrium consideration this V should act upward and this M 1 should act in the opposite direction. So, what do we need to consider that similar way we are calculating one more resultant here. We are again finding out the distance as at which the resultant is acting from this figure. So, along with that to find out shear we need to add this also along with plus this will give us the V 2. Similarly, this M 1 plus this V 1 multiplied by this distance say D plus say this is V prime plus V prime multiplied by this say centroid distance C prime, C prime will give us the M 2. So, this is what we need to consider to find out M 2 because M 1 remains this also will act, this also will act and then all three components will give us the M 2. So, once we understand this properly, we can easily understand the remain table. So, this calculation only we will carry out for moment about x. So, in this case, this is the moment we are talking about. We need to calculate the other moment also in the y direction that how can we cal calculate? We have assumed that the force is acting along this direction. So, this lever arm will act for moment around this y axis. So, this force multiplied by this lever arm will give us the section wise this this section wise moments and then we will add up all those moments. So, actually it is acting on this this aerodynamic center this is the 15 percent and that 15 percent is here that will be acting and giving us the m y moment. So, Keeping in mind all these data, we will go to the next slide uh, or if possible if sup it supports, we will go to the excel sheet and we will try to find out, we will try to check the calculation, how do we carry, carry out. The basic understanding should be clear here. Okay. So, as we have seen, we are uh, starting with this station station 240 we are starting with station 240 that is what 240 is given here. Uh, chord length C is 48 inch as it is shown here and here lies as we assume that ratio of the span wise variation to the lift coefficient in terms of a unit 
distribution along the chord that is C bar L. So, that we are assuming to be unity, we are not considering any variation. So, with respect to that there is no modification of running load per inch of wing that remains same 48. Now, average running load from this section and this section we are simply taking an arith arithmetic average and finding out the load. Distance of station between these two station 240 and 235 is 5 and here all if you see this is 220 and 205 which is 15 accordingly we have noted down all those points. Before we go to distance uh, average load for all the stations are also calculated. Strip load is as it is mentioned column, column 5 multiplied by column 6 that is column 5 multiplied by column 6. The average uh, running load is this, distance is this. So, uh, the strip load acting on that particular strip is total this much 242 in this particular segment. It is this segment if we talk about this segment it is 242.73. Now, amount of centroid sorry arm to centroid of strip load here comes that trapezoidal centroid formula because as you look into it the chord is changing 48 49 we use that formula and we find out that uh, arm length as 2.49 we have the load strip load we have the amount of Uh, arm length and accordingly we we see see that uh, this this shear remains same this will require to calculate the moment so this is the moment from previous section moment from previous section means as we were talking about this is similar to that m1 from if well while we are calculating for m2 so for M, M2 while we are calculating this is uh, moment from previous section is that uh, moment due to the distributed load this is uh, multiplication of this arm and this. So, this we are talking about this is column 9 and column 6 that is strip load and distance between stations. So, this is it says moment from the previous section it is actually the multiplication at the junction of previous section the shear multiplied by the distance. So, this is this shear multiplied by this distance. So, that is what we, we get here while we will see the uh, excel sheet we will again understand it properly and this is the moment due to the strip load. So, this, this is as I mentioned this arm length multiplied by the strip load we are getting and column 12 th this is the m x that is uh, previous one the previous m m 1 or the previous section load moment due to the shear this this one that is the column 10 and then the column 11 this one. So, all these four are making it to here it is column 12 the previous one section and then uh, column 10 that is
column 10 is because of the previous section shear and the distance and this is from the strip load and the centroid whatever we multiplied that is yes these two we are summing up and we are getting the moment. So, this is what we get for the m x and then if we look for the y axis the x distance from the aerodynamic center to the y reference axis. So, this, this is nothing but the 15 percent of that particular chord 15 percent of that particular chord always this is 15 percent of that particular chord and then average is considered and then once we have the average then it is simply the strip load as we have have in column 7 this is the strip load and that uh, average of distance is multiplied we get the moment y and this is the sum with respect to the previous one and this one. So, some column sum of this. So, accordingly we, we if we continue calculation following this process it becomes easy uh, now with days nowadays with help of excel sheet we can easily we can easily modify we can easily carry out uh, this type of calculation and one check is better to note here is that uh, the shear or the sum of the strip load is coming equals to 171760, which is exactly the amount of load applied and that is the reason unit load per unit square inch is applied on the wing and the calculation is carried out. So, with respect to this let us before we finish let us uh, look at the excel sheet what we, we have learned how can we carry out with help of the excel sheet. Here in this uh, diagram we see assisting figures are also there, complete table is also there. So, as we were mentioning this is simple average. So, that excel sheet formula is used here it is divided by 2 and uh, if we see this, this multiplication is carried out simple way. and we also carry out the other op operations as described this is the sum sum of previous and this new, new one and then we are getting the sum sum value. Like that uh, we calculate the m x moment we calculate the m y moment as well as the shear acting on the section. So, this uh, diagram helps a lot for understanding and if we a plot this uh, this excel is uh, generally not used for plotting this type of diagram but in this particular presentation it is easier to show using excel that's why excuse me column values are uh, mx value is plotted with respect to the root section to the tip section here the shear force is is plotted uh, which is not a straight line if you look at it carefully and this is the moment y which is also uh, a curve uh, and we can have have a feeling how the moment varies along the span for only lift we consider. So, uh, with conclusion of today's lecture uh, the reference is a standard reference is taken. Uh, and uh, what we have learned this week is that shear and moment on wing unit load analysis for wing shears and moments and similarly for other five components other four components as we have discussed uh, in the unit load case we can have some analysis we can keep the solution and we can use those solutions for in future. Uh, design purpose. Uh, thank you for attending uh, this lecture. With that, let us conclude today's lecture. We will meet again in the next lecture.